Well, what an end to the Six Nations for Italy. What are Six Nations for Italy? The best we have seen in years for the Italians and for the most part in their final game against Wales. What an impressive performance as well. As for Wales, the question marks remain, the uncertainty continues, but loads for me to get into in this video. So welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Alfie. Appreciate you clicking on the video. And comment down below, what did you make of the game? But I guess now we're at the end of the championship, more pertinently, what did you make of the Six Nations as a whole from an Italian perspective and from a Welsh perspective as well? Loads for us to get into. I'm never gonna be able to cover everything, so you can have your say in the comments section. And also, if you fancy liking the video, drop a thumbs up on it, just gives it a little boost. Uh, and also subscribe to the channel as well, so you don't miss a thing. But as I say, welcome back. What a brilliant Six Nations for Italy because they've been brilliant. I mean, they will look back on it potentially. They will look back on their first game against England and feel that's a game they coulda, shoulda won. They'll feel they should have won against France with that Garbisi penalty right at the death hitting the post. And then they eventually have got a great victory over Scotland and they've backed it up against the Welsh. And that's kind of one of my feelings about this game. We can get into the various different parts of the Italian game. I thought their defence looked absolutely brilliant. Their blitz defence shut down any sort of space for Wales. They stopped Wales getting over the gain line. Their scrum was making penalties. They put the ball through the hands nicely. They won the kicking game. There were so many areas of this game from an individual tactical point of view that I think we can get into for Italy on how well they did. And also some of the individual players whose stock seems to be rising as they gain more and more experience at international level. But one of my biggest takeaways was the fact that Italy were favourites for this game. And it's not often in Six Nations history, Italy have come into a game and been the favourites for it. And I would say it's even less that Italy have had a bit of expectation on them in the Six Nations and haven't been able to deliver. How many times have we seen it over the years where we see a promising Italian team, they might get a victory or they put in a good performance and then they're never quite able to back it up the next week. You feel like the quality or just where that team has been, they haven't been able to do that. Whereas that's exactly what they did today. Because from the first minute, they shut Wales down. I know Wales scored a couple of late tries where Italy probably dropped off a little bit and subs came on and it was the end of the game. The result was all wrapped up anyway. But this Italian team backed it up. And that for me is what gives me such hope that this isn't one of those Six Nations where Italy get a couple of wins, isn't that great? Happy days, everyone claps them on the back and thinks brilliant and then we get round to the next Six Nations and they win one game or they don't win any and they're back to winning the wooden spoon. You feel like this could be a moment, fingers crossed, touch wood, because it is for the best for rugby internationally and for the Six Nations and for the Northern Hemisphere, you feel that this could be an Italian team that has a lot of good years ahead of it. And I've said already, so many different areas of their game to be pleased about, so many individual players and the quality in that team at the moment, and also the under-20s. As we keep mentioning, their under-20s have been good. They haven't won the wooden spoon. I forget now the exact date. It's been years since the under-20s, the Italian team has won the wooden spoon. Hopefully, the talent is there for them to come through and continue to build on this. So, brilliant from Italy, and I thought they were excellent. And I was just, as I say, I was so impressed with how the Italian team went about their business, given the fact that actually a lot of people thought they would win this game. They did it. And well, the final scoreline wasn't that convincing, but the game was wrapped up with pretty much seven minutes to go when they made it 24-7. Wales score a couple of late tries, which means actually it ends up only being a three-point game. But overall, such a convincing performance overall. I keep meaning to say margin of victory, but I guess it wasn't in the end. Final thought on Italy as well, and just to say is Gonzalo Casada coming in what a job he has done. It's going to be really interesting what happens with coach of the Six Nations because there's a pretty good case that it should be the Italian coach, really. I guess it's probably, you'd say, going to go to Andy Farrell because Ireland most likely are going to end up winning the championship. You can understand why, but we already knew Ireland were really, really good. We knew that at the World Cup and they didn't do a grand slam. England have progressed under Steve Borthwick. They've done a good job. See how they get on against France today. But I, I, you struggle to put forward an argument that anyone has done a better job than Gonzalo Casada. I'd love to see him rewarded for that. I don't know if he will or not. But there's two sides to every game. There's two sides to every coin. Let's get on to the Welsh. So I have been broadly positive about Wales this Six Nations because particularly over the first couple of games, they showed spirit, they showed endeavour, 
They brought a lot of young players into the team and some of them had really good performances, even though Cam Winnett at the moment is learning his trade at international fullback. He's done okay. Alex Mann has come in and done pretty well. I like the way Daffy Jenkins has captained the team. So broadly speaking, I have been positive with them. And I will continue to be because I think you have to be patient. I think the reality with where Wales are at the moment, if we want to talk about the regions, the club game, it is not easy. This is going to take time. But having said that, until those final couple of consolation tries right at the end, this was a pretty chastening end to the championship from a Welsh perspective because for vast majority of that game they were completely outclassed and it's a young team you think about those young players and you hope that it doesn't have too much of a negative impact on them I don't think it will but you do look at it the first time since is it 2003 that Wales haven't won a single match in the Six Nations again they've displayed that there's no shortage of fight in this team We've seen that throughout this tournament. You think that could stand them in good stead. But equally, you look at where their game is at the moment and you feel like it is going to take a while. And I suppose, I guess the one, one of the big things for me when I think about Wales, I think is where were you in week one and where are you ending up in week five? Because the Six Nations is a short championship in terms of the amount of games, but often you can get real progression in that time. I would question with Wales how much true progression we have seen when you compare it with other teams say I don't know in England or in Italy for example of where they were on week one and where you feel they're probably gonna have progressed to by the end of the championship with this Welsh team I think I have a few more question marks around that area now if you're being kind you say this Welsh era, this Welsh team is not going to be determined by one Six Nations. I think the reality is this is a Welsh team that isn't going to be determined by perhaps a couple of Six Nations. How long is this going to take? How long is this process? The summer tour to Australia I think is going to be fascinating. In fact, I think that could be a really good tour because we don't really know where the Wallabies are. New era under Joe Schmidt. Wales are clearly in a tough position. They've got some good players there, but they're so inexperienced. They will have... Jack Morgan, I think Liam Williams is available again, to Lupe Falatau potentially as well. Some of the hookers, they'll have players coming back into the team for the summer tour. But yeah, it just feels for me, with Wales, there's a lot of questions. I will be patient with them because I think we have to be. But I can understand if in Wales at the moment, it's pretty downbeat, it's pretty disappointing with where this team, and I guess where the game is as a whole, it's not just this team, it is where the whole sport currently is in Wales. And I hope we see them back to where Warren Gatland has had Wales teams previously sooner rather than later. My big concern is how long that is ultimately gonna take. So those are my general thoughts. Italy have beaten Wales to round off their Six Nations and to win two games should have won three if we look at that draw against France, could have easily won four when we look back at that narrow defeat at home to England on the opening weekend. Do you agree with me that this is an Italian team firmly on the up? And let me know what you make of where Wales are at this moment in time. I look forward to reading your comments. Just a reminder, hit the thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.